Hi guys, Dr. Dillard here. Let's do a couple of these tests here. This is for lab number week four, spring of 2020. So the first one is Holman's test. This is a test to see if any of the veins of the leg here are clogged up with thrombosis formation. Thrombosis, of course, is, is dangerous because it can break loose, go up, go through your heart, hopefully without getting stuck and go into your lungs and call, cause pulmonary embolisms. The first one is a test called Holman's test. It's really simple. Uh, it's almost like Braggart's test. You have you raise the leg up, and then you dorsiflex the foot, and you're seeing if the patient has any pain here in the posterior leg, namely in the calf or soleus. Uh, if they do, that is indicative of DVT, deep vein thrombosis in the uh, the deep vessels of the lower limb, like the peroneal vein and the anterior and posterior tibial veins. Problem with this test is, or let me show you the other part. Part two is just to palpate uh, the calf on the sides and then you can also palpate behind for any cords or pain that is also positive for DVT. The, the strongest part of this test and part of the examination is looking at the gator area or the uh, medial lateral malleoli and seeing if there's any swelling. That's the strongest finding for DVT. If they have sciatic in this leg and it's swollen down here, they go to the ER to get a Doppler ultrasound to rule out DVT, okay? Problem with Holman's test, the sensitivity specificity is absolutely terrible. Uh, sensitivity is down around 30% in some studies and it's, I mean, it's just really not very good. The other problem with it, it doesn't, uh, DVT gets dangerous when it happens up in the deep vessels like the popliteal vein or the deep femoral vein or the femoral vein. Those are the ones that can kill you because the, uh, the, the thrombus formation can get quite long and large and it can cause more damage when it gets in your lung. This test doesn't do anything for that. Uh, the modified Perthes test I described in the lecture slides, I'm not going to demonstrate that. Pretty unlikely that'll show up anywhere. I worry about that test though because it pressurizes the deep system and I worry that it could actually cause a pulmonary embolism or it could encourage the thrombus to break loose and cause an emboli. Uh, so I'm not, I'm just kind of demonstrating that one just on the slides. Okay, so Holman's test again, super simple. Flex it up here. Now that's the way the board books say, like McGee's says to do it. Uh, the way some of the vascular uh, authors, the specialist text, they, rec they recommend bending the knee like this and then testing it like this. Uh, especially if the patient has any leg pain or sciatica. I mean, if you do this on someone with sciatica, of course it's going to cause pain. It's going to irritate the sciatic nerve. Uh, so they recommend doing it like that. For boards though, I would do it the way I showed you, straight leg and dorsiflexion. All right, uh, so that's Braggart's test. This one you don't know, uh, this is called Berger's test. And this one is not a test for DVT. This is a test for athler or for clogging of the arterial pipe. So peripheral arterial disease or maybe Berger's disease, not so much in this country, but other countries, India, people, uh, places where smoking is really high have a more, more problems with Berger's disease. But this test, Berger's test for Berger's disease, is a test for the arterial pipes to see if they're clogged. A Holman's test is a test for the venous pipes to see if they're clogged, so don't mess those up. The modified Perthes test is a test also for the venous pipes to see if they're, clo they're clogged. All right, let's do Berger's test. So Berger's test is a two-part test. Uh, so part one is really simple. You can do this with one leg at a time, or you can do it with both legs, depending on your back and how heavy the legs are. If you can do it bilaterally, it's better, because you're comparing side to side. Um, so, it's very simple. Six, remember the 60-60 rule. And different authors say different things. I'm going with 60 degrees for 60 seconds. Uh, with their shoes off, all you do is raise their legs up. I'm not gonna go all the way up to 60. That's probably 45-ish. Uh, but I'll be out of the camera shot if I go up higher. And I'm just going to watch the bottom of her feet now. And she's going to sit there. Now we have the blood vessels, the, the feet need blood, right? So the arteries are pumped, need to channel blood or allow for blood to pump up into the feet. And for her, her there's no problem. They're not changing color at all. But someone with peripheral arterial disease 
where the pipes are all clogged up, the feet might start becoming peloric or get really white looking. And that's actually a positive if the feet or one foot or the other foot turns ghostly white within 60 seconds. Some authors say three minutes. The chiropractic board book uh, author McGee says three minutes. So check for your specific board book to see what the timing is. Uh, but if they turn white, that's not good. That means that the blood vessel is so occluded that even the simple force of gravity stops the blood from flowing into the uh, into the uh, extremity. Another thing, if you did one at a time, so let's just do one at a time, you can also kind of stand on the side here and you, you can look at both the bottom of the foot here and the dorsum of the foot. Uh, you can watch for whiteness, but you can watch the blood vessels to see if they get sucked in. Everybody's got some blood vessels and some people with peripheral arterial disease they don't have good circulation. The, bl the blood vessels kind of go negative and it looks like they suck in here. Okay, but I think the first way I did it will be fine bilaterally. So that's it. That's part one of Berger's test. What's a positive? Uh, the one foot or the other turns ghostly white, pyloric, uh, with, or blanching, I think uh, McGee calls it blanching. It turns ghostly white within one minute, and that means that the pipes just aren't working very good. Okay, pretty simple. Uh, if the, the feet stay a normal color, uh, then the test is negative. All right. Now, part two of Berger's test is simple. I might have to change my camera angle for this, uh, but all you have to do uh, and is to, to double check. And this is, part two is really done for someone who has a positive part one. So if her feet turned really white, uh, I could confirm the positive finding here by doing part two. If they're normal here, I don't think you have to do uh, part two. And for my class, you don't have to do. And you can ask if you're in boards, you can ask the evaluator, do you want me to go on to do part two? Because uh, really part two is a confirmation that the test is positive in part one. But let's pretend one of her feet was really ghostly white. Part two is really simple. All you have uh, them do is sit up and dangle their feet over the bench. Uh, that's going to impart a gravitational force and it's going to we can see how fast the feet come back to a normal color. Okay, normally when her foot is raised, even in a normal person, it's going to turn maybe a tiny bit white. Uh, so you're going to reassess color returning to the foot is what the deal is with her. All right, so can I have you sit up, please? Can you slip? Are you going to hang? let your feet hang off right there? Thank you very much. And all you're going to do is go around the side and you're just going to watch the feet come back. Uh, and if they were super white, I mean, this is why it's for a positive test. If they were super white, uh, you time how fast it comes back. If, if it returns to normal color within 15 seconds, then it does not confirm the positive test. It's a negative test. Chances are, if one of the feet is ghostly white and the test is positive, when you put them down, it could take 20, 30, 40 seconds, even longer for the color to return. Uh, and that would confirm the positive test. So if it takes longer than 15 seconds for the red color or for the normal color of the foot, remember it was pale white, for it to return to color, if it's over 15 seconds, that confirms the positive test. There's another thing that occurs where the, where the foot turns, it's dusky red is kind of the buzzword. Uh, if the foot is, if the, if the pipes are really clogged and you have the feet up at 45 degrees, the tissue is becoming hypoxic and releasing vasodilators and they can't get up. Uh, they can't get up to do anything. The gravity pushes them down, but they start building up. When you swing her feet down like this, they come flying down into the feet and they vasodilate, too much vasodilation. And that makes the feet become red because so much blood is... Uh, or because the, the vessels are dilating so much and the micro uh, circulation is dilating so much, tons of blood is being dumped into them. It turns the foot dusky red. So uh, I won't say anything more about that. I did talk all about that and showed you pictures of, of that in the lab lecture, which is right before this video. Okay, so uh, I hope you enjoyed this and I'll see you in week five. Actually, next week, week five, we have our lab test. Since we're still shelter in place, 
I obviously can't have you demonstrate anything, uh, but I will have lab questions. Uh, it'll be a, la a written lab test only as we did last quarter uh, for the final. Okay, see you in the next video.